All right, hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I hope you enjoy these videos. If you do, please feel free to like, comment, or subscribe. It would be uh, fun to get your 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 feedback and uh, help you grow the channel. So let's get started on this quick review on premature atrial contractions. You know, so briefly, I'm going to just take a look at the heart in this coronal slice and talk through the normal depolarization of the heart. We know that up here is our SA node, and our SA node fires off. Fires off, you know, at 60 to 80 beats per minute typically, and it's typically pretty regular. And when it fires, it causes the atria to depolarize in this wave of depolarization. And that wave of depolarization creates our P wave, which looks something like this. And then what ends up happening is we have our AV node captures that signal. And the AV node delays the signal. It delays 120 to 200 milliseconds to give the ventricles time to fill with that atrial blood from the atrial contraction. And then it sends signal down into the ventricles so that we have our nice QRS complexes. And so that obviously looks something like this. Then we have our T wave for our repolarization. And so the reason I bring up this typical waves of depolarization is because we're going to be talking about PACs today. And so the P wave, the morphology of the P wave matters. If we look at this coronal slice, we see that our P wave travels from the sinus node down into the left, which means it would create in lead one, a upward deflection P wave in an AVF, an upward deflection P wave. That is helpful to help make sure that we know that this is coming from the sinus node. And we know that PACs, PACs do not arise from the sinus node. So what that means is that instead of the beat coming from our sinus node, we get a premature beat that arises from another cardiac cell, maybe here. And this little ectopic focus fires off, and it fires off early in a premature atrial contraction, causing a wave of depolarization across the atria. And that wave would create, probably in this case, a downward deflection in lead one. Right, what I'm getting at is it's going to create a different morphology for the P wave. And that P wave, as it depolarizes the atria, is still going to be conducted through the AV node in a similar fashion. And it's going to create a QRS that looks the exact same. So it might you might see a, you know, if I compare it to our uh, our previous normal beat, you might have a P wave that looks different, and then you'll still have typical ventricular contraction. And so this right here is the premature atrial contraction that will obviously when it utilizes the AV node to conduct to the ventricles will create a normal QRS. And so PACs um, because of that will classically have QRSs that look the same as the normal QRSs but they occur early and when you look at the P wave that drove that QRS it's going to look a little bit different. So let's take a look at an EKG with PACs. So this is a rhythm strip. And so if we go through our rhythm strip here, we've got our P, we've got our QRS, and then we've got right here, beginning of our T wave. Same thing, P, QRS, 
in our T wave. And then if you notice, we've got kind of this beat, beat, and then a, a quick beat that occurs. So this is a premature beat, right? And then we get our next beats that arise kind of on time at the normal rate. So this right here is the premature beat. And so we're trying to figure out what kind of premature beat is this? I see that the QRS complex looks very similar to the previous QRS complex. And so I know that that means that it's taking the same ventricular depolarization pathway via the AV node as the previous beats. So I look in front of it and I say, do I see any atrial activity before this beat? And I see right here in this box, this nice P wave. That is what caused that QRS to occur. And so because I see a P wave that is, in this case, this downward deflecting P wave, the morphology of that P wave is much different than the previous P wave, which is the normal P wave, which is an upright P wave. So I know if, because of that, that that is an ectopic P wave. So because of that, the cause of the premature QRS complex was a premature atrial contraction that led to ventricular depolarization in the normal fashion. So these ectopic P waves, if they fire early, they're then termed a premature atrial contraction. And if you look at our normal beats after that, you've got these normal P waves that lead to our QRSs and then another P wave lead to our QRS. So that's just, that's a very classic, um, how you would classically see a PAC. And so if I was gonna maybe draw out a rhythm that was similar to what a P would expect a PAC to look like, it would be something like this, where you have a P, Q, R, S, T, P, Q, R, S, T. And then you have a quick P wave, P, Q, R, S, that looks the same, T. And then have a little bit of a pause, and then we're back to our normal P, Q, R, S, T. So in this case, it's the same thing. We're ticking away, we're ticking away. And then we have this shortened R to R interval. So we have this early beat, this premature beat. We see that it's a narrow QRS. I look in front of it, I see this P wave that looks a little bit different. It doesn't have to look too terribly different because it could be coming from, say, the P wave, that ectopic P wave could come from like right here and cause depolarization that is very similar to the typical atrial depolarization. So it doesn't have to be markedly different. And then you'll see a compensatory pause as the sinus node takes back over. So hope this helps and we'll continue to deep dive.